Welcome to The Vine. I'm Dominique, the property curator here, and today we're going to be having a close look at some conservation work that happened slightly earlier this year to the 18th century stained glass in the tomb chamber. This is the front of the house, looking very magnificent. We're about to head round the side and into the tomb chamber. So one of the contributing factors about why we urgently needed to have our beautiful stained glass restored was the impact of climate change. As you can see, we are south facing here so that the sun beats down very strongly against these windows when it's at the height of summer. And it's very, very prevailing wind direction means that we get a lot of water ingress when it rains very heavily here. So that combined with the heat means that the wood um, around the, the windows contract and expand, the lead work contracts and expands. So we get quite a lot of movement and that causes the glass to crack uh, and then water ingress to go into the tomb chamber itself. So sorting that out was a, a major, major reason why we had to get the, the windows conserved. So we're now in the chapel at the Vine, which is one of the only places that Henry VIII would recognise if he were to visit here today, along with the Oak Gallery at the other side of the building. The chapel was created sometime around 1520, and that is also when these beautiful windows behind me were made, but they were made for the Chapel of the Holy Ghost in Basingstoke and added into the chapel here at the Vine in 1680s by the Chute family. Uh, about nine years ago, we had some conservation work carried out on these windows to put some isothermic glazing behind them. So the stained glass is set forward. There's an outer pane that allows airflow to circulate around the glass to stop condensation forming. Uh, this is really important to do because the stained glass was starting to fade and be really badly damaged by water ingress. This has been such a successful project that we've decided to carry out the same work on our beautiful 18th century glass in the tomb chamber, which we're going to go and have a look at now. So the tomb chamber isn't normally open to the public, so we're going to take a look for this special behind the scenes film. So we're now in the tomb chamber at the Vine, and this area was created in the 1770s by John Chute, who owned the Vine from 1754 until his death in 1776. He wanted to create a beautiful memorial to his family with the intention of having his ancestors exhumed and buried here, and himself and any of his descendants buried here. Uh, he died, unfortunately, before he could accomplish this, but not before he had created this magnificent space, the beautiful effigy of his great-grandfather Chaloner, accompanied by these really brightly coloured and absolutely fabulous 18th century stained glass windows. Both of these windows are by renowned stained glass makers of the 18th century, William Price the Younger and John Rowell, and they both show the adoration of the shepherds, which was a very popular theme in stained glass imagery at the time, because it reflected a really natural piety uh, and recollection and rem remembrance of family. Let's hear from Jack Clare, who is director of Holywell Glass, the conservation company who carried out this fabulous work for us. So once we uh, got the panels to the studio, the first thing we do is photograph them, uh, pre-conservation photographs. Then we really closely examine them, so we're forming this pre-conservation document with proposals of what we're going to do. And it actually found that the lead work that holds the glass together is, is still in really good condition. So we don't want to risk any damage to the glass by dismantling that where we don't have to. So we've left that in its original lead matrix. The glass has been very carefully cleaned under binocular microscope. It's, the painted surface is extremely fragile, so that's done by rolling cotton buds across the surface, not even rubbing them because any abrasion can take away the paint. There were a few panes uh, that were more severely broken than others, so we did have to very partially dismantle panels to access those because you can we retain all the original material and broken panes are edge bonded with conservation grade resins then finally uh, the panels can be pieced back together and a bronze framework made up 
uh, which is going to support the panel as it's brought slightly inside its original position, uh, which will protect it from weathering and cycles of condensation for, for posterity going forward. So to refit the stained glass, it's, it's having a new bronze framework manufactured, so it's actually going to sit around 40 millimetres inside its original plane. So that will be screwed to the surrounding timber framework and in the place of the where the stained glass originally sat, a new secondary glazing layer has been formed in traditional handmade glass and lead again and that will now take the brunt of the weathering and uh, all the condensation that once would have been on the historic glass. I hope you've enjoyed this behind the scenes tour of the vine. All of our important conservation work wouldn't be possible without the support of our members and those who have left gifts in their wills. Thank you very much for your continuing support. Mm -hmm.